guys, thanks for stopping by. So recently I met a couple of my plant friends. Um, if you guys follow YouTube plant channels and you read the comments, then you've probably seen the sweet comments and supportive comments of Holly Hasawaga Nelson. And that was who I was able to meet at Cactus and Tropicals in Salt Lake City. And I met her and her friend, Crystal. Well, first of all, let me say, they are just awesome ladies. They're crazy and fun and giggly, and um, they just both have an awesome spirit about them. They both love plants. Um, they're besties, and they uh, shared some of their fun plant stories with me, and it was really, really cool to get to meet them. And today I wanted to share a couple of their stories that they told me. They've actually recorded them for me, so I'm gonna play them to you throughout this video and kind of expound upon what their stories. Okay, this is um, what I've learned on my plant journey as far as um, male plants and female plants, something I wasn't really aware of until uh, my bestie ended up giving me a plant that is a duplicate of a plant I have. I have a Schifflera, and it's big and um, always love just being in my house and it's doing really great and everything and um, my best friend ended up with one of her with her Schifflera having mealybugs and so she said please take it and and make it better for me and so I did I took her plant brought it home with me cleaned it up got it all better got ready to take it back to her because it was it was all healthy again took it back to her and she must have had it in her house maybe not even a week and it started to go downhill and then I also noticed that my plant that I had seemed a little sadder and a little droopier and I and so we got to talking and we thought it was rather strange that you know there is a possibility that maybe I had a male plant and the one that I gave back to her was a female plant so she hurried and gave it back to me, and the minute I got it back into my house within a couple of days, they were both happy to be around each other, and it was totally amazing. So we both giggled about it, didn't know how it could actually happen, but it did. So what do you guys think about that? Do you guys have any plants that you've moved away from each other and you noticed that they started being sad or got sick or and then maybe you put them back together and they perked back up again. Since I was a little kid, because I watched Reading Rainbow, I remember, remember that one episode about the pumpkins and the flowers on the stems. Like the pumpkin plant actually has male and female parts both on the same plant. And um, that Reading Rainbow showed how they pollinated the female flower with the male flower, which when I was a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing. Well, I still think it's the coolest thing even as an adult. So there are some plants that are male, some plants that are female, and some plants have both parts on them. But after hearing Holly's story and Crystal's story, then I wanted to do some more research. And surprisingly, when I got on the internet, there was a ton of research done on the subject of plants and their feelings and their, like if they have emotions, if they have souls, if all kinds of stuff. For instance, uh, there was a study done on, I think it was like 3,000 mustard seedlings. So those are trees. And in this study, scientists recognized that the seedlings actually recognized their siblings. Their siblings being um, the other plants that came from the same mother plant. And in this study, the study showed that like if the siblings were planted next to each other, they wouldn't compete with one another. So um, they're kind of different from human siblings in that way. Their um, root systems were much more shallow and they didn't absorb as much water and nutrients from the soil when they were planted amongst their siblings. They did, however, grow more like more vining happened and more intertwined leaves with their siblings. On the other end, when they were not by their siblings, then they just tried to suck up as much water as they could 
as much of the minerals out of the soil. They didn't really like think about the plant next to them and or care about what care <laughs> about their needs. That's weird. In some of the other studies that I read about, the same thing happened like if there was a group of plants planted together in the same vicinity of one another, um, the plant would recognize another plant of its same species and it would grow towards that plant. Weird. Like those studies kind of make you think that uh, plants have feelings and connections the same way as us humans do, you know? Um, but that's probably just how I'm interpreting it because I'm a human, right? There's a lot of differing thoughts and speculations and theories about whether plants have a soul or not. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think plants have a soul? Let me know. Let me know in the comments because I'm really, I, this kind of stuff is so interesting to me and I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say about it what your innermost thoughts and feelings are on the matter. So there's even there's even differing opinions about what the definition of a soul is as well. I'm going to recite the definition from the dictionary. It's the spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal regarded as immortal. So according to the dictionary meaning, plants don't have a soul because they're not a human or an animal. However, they are alive and they do breathe. They breathe in carbon dioxide and they breathe out air. And we thank them very much for that because without them, we would be up the creek. So now let's listen to Crystal's story. Now I have a peace, I had a peace lily and one was a little bit smaller and then I had a larger peace lily and I had them together and they were doing, they seemed to be doing fine. Um, but every time I left, my smaller piece lily seemed to just droop and not do as well, but my larger piece lily was fine. And then I moved the smaller piece lily away and then I thought, okay, this is strange, but still the same thing happened. And so I gave it back, I gave it to my bestie and said, okay, this is just very strange. And then my other plants, they kind of did similarly the same thing. And for some reason, I this large peace lily seems to be the dominant plant in my house. And every time I bring another plant in my house, and every time I bring another plant into the house, uh, it just, this other plant will just totally wilt and they start dying and then I give that plant to my my bestie because it can't handle it so I can't have another plant in the house because this plant is a one my house is a one plant house because it thrives on being the only one yep and um, when I brought the peace lily into my home I have the uh, domino peace lily and it is, uh, I believe it's the female because the two of them sit next to each other and so they're like sisters, you know? So as strange as it might be, I don't know if any of my planty friends out there um, have noticed their plants behaving in this way, but this is something that uh, Steph wanted us to share with all of you. So thank you so much. Have a great day. So what do you guys think of that? It could just be a chemical thing. Could be something else. No one knows for sure. Have you guys ever had a plant that didn't get along well with other plants? In my human way of seeing things, it seems like plants have personality. And in Crystal's case with her peace lily, that peace lily seems pretty stuck up to me. Have, do you guys, do any of your plants have a personality? Some of mine seem to. Now I know you could um, not discount, but you could just say, well, that's because the plant just doesn't like your climate or your caring or your poor caring. <laughs> but there could be more to it than that. Some of my plants are happy to be alive. Some of them are like go-getters. Some of them, and they can be the same species of plant too, which is interesting. Like you can have, 
two of the same plant in the same area. And I know there's more to it than just that because they could have had, there's so many different variables that could have happened before that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the plant doesn't have like a personality. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you think plants have personalities? I know I've got some that I think they have the personality of a big fat whiner. What about you guys though? I, I'd love to hear about this. This is so interesting to me. So a lot of folks are probably might think this is crazy thinking and that it's purely science. And I agree with that. I think there's a scientific explanation for everything. Science though, it backs up a thought or an idea that someone has had. The thought or the idea comes first. And there's loads of ideas and subjects that science hasn't even touched on yet. Okay, so I tend to get off track when I talk about something that's so exciting and mysterious like this. And like, it's so much fun for me to think about all these questions and make my own theories as to how things work and what's going on. But it's hard for me to put all of this into coherent words that maybe make sense to someone else. So when I start thinking about all this stuff, like my brain, seriously, like I can feel it like, swelling up and it just explodes all these questions everywhere. It's hard for me to stay on track. So let me backtrack to where we began. Do plants feel and can they love? Can they? The science that I have read seems to indicate yes, they can. At least at least in some sort of chemical way. But I mean love in humans too, like it's a feeling, but there's chemicals that go that make that feeling. So I'm gonna tell you some of the findings of some of the scientific experiments that I read about. And the first scientist is Jagadish, Jagadish Chandra Boos. He had so many degrees that I'm gonna to have to look at the paper because I can't even remember them all. So he was a polymath, physicist, biologist, biophysicist, botanist, and archeologist. And he was also a writer of science fiction. <laughs> so I think he's a pretty, pretty well-rounded dude um, with a lot of accomplishments. He did a lot of plant studies. He also did some stuff with microwaves and um, some plant measuring tool. So Dr. Boos's experiments concluded that number one, plants grow better in pleasant sounding music and that their growth is thwarted in negative music or negative harsh sounds. Interesting, I think, like we've all kind of heard that for a long time. Dr. Boos was around in the late 1800s. This um, has been around for a long time. I think a lot of people have done science experiments to prove that for their own selves and I think we can all agree on that. Number two, he concluded that plants are sensitive to pain and affection. I don't know, I've always wondered when I'm touching the leaves on my plants if they hate it, like people have said, or if they're like, ah, that feels nice because I can feel the love coming out of her fingertips. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the kind of affection he's talking about, but maybe they can just feel our love for us. And I'll touch on that later. Our, our love for us, our love for them, or our joy that they give us. And we're reciprocating it back to them. I'm not sure, or our energy or something, but there's, there's more to come about this later. Um, number three, he concluded that plants have a nervous mechanism that gives them the ability to recognize and react to an individual that has committed an act of violence, especially against a plant in their presence. So this one, this one's funny to me because I get this image of when my dog Frank walks in the room, like all the plants going, hi. <laughs> and I'm gonna watch closely for any interesting behavior from my plants when Frank enters the room. Frank is my, Cocker Spaniel, who's the sweetest little heart, but he's a major spaz. And then along with that one, not only can they um, be aware and feel pain, 
but they also have the ability to communicate. And cool. Another scientist that I read about was um, Grover Cleveland Baxter, or Cleve Baxter. He was actually an interrogator in the um, CIA, and he used his polygraph he did polygraph testing. You'll have to read more about this. I can't go into detail on everything, but he did some polygraph testing that caused him to believe that plants feel pain and have extra sensory perception. Um, ex extra sensory perception is the sixth sense that everyone talks about. It's just that feeling that you don't really know where it comes from. And some of his conclusions were that weren't exactly accepted by the scientific community, but at the time. He was, his findings were in the 1960s. So one of his conclusions were that uh, plants react to, plants react to harm, like cutting their leaves, etc. And they even react to harmful thoughts of humans that are in proximity of them. Another of his conclusions were that, that plants are aware of each other and they mourned the death of anything. Um, like even if, I think one of the studies that he did, bacteria in the sink, he poured some boiling water down a sink and killed the bacteria and the plants reacted to that in some way. Another of his findings was that trees disliked people who killed plants carelessly or even in scientific research. That's interesting. And uh, his last finding was, I like this one, it's beautiful, that trees, trees fondly remembered and extended their energy out to people who had tended to them, cared for them, raised them, even when their people were far away in time and space. That's beautiful and that's, an awesome thing to think of like I have 300 plants here that I love and take care of and gosh even more than that in my garden in my yard and I hope they all love me and they're giving me their energy to help boost me up isn't that a beautiful thought because I'm giving them my energy. Gosh, that's just so neat. Like I feel like I just have an army of plants on my side, you know? This reminds me back to the good old days when my kids were little and we had this tree in our backyard. It was a winter pear tree and my kids all played in it all the time. Like they referred to it as their friend and they even called it Teresa. They named it Teresa. How cute is that? Um, my kids have always been very like sensitive and caring. They still are. They're beautiful people. And um, it could have came from the book that I read to them when they were little called The Giving Tree. Oh, that is such a good book. It's by Shel Silverstein. And I used to read that to them all the time. Uh, I recently just bought it for Harley so she could read it to the new little grandbaby. And that's a really great book. So even though it's a children's book, if you haven't read it, you should read it because there's a lot that us adults can get out of it too. And um, if you're sensitive, which I'm guessing you probably are because I'm not generalizing, but I feel like most people who take care of plants are pretty sensitive and caring. Um, well, if you are, be prepared when you read the book to, you know, do a real ugly beautiful cry right from the center of your being. So that's about it for this video. I, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I'm not just weird and you're worried about me now. <laughs> but be sure to let me know your thoughts on this even if you think I'm a wacko. It's okay. I'm fine with that. I'd really like to know what, what you guys all think about this. Um, and if you have any cool plant stories that you would like me to share on this channel, I would love to. I love cool plant stories. Um, you can send them to me on my Instagram, which is hall, H-A-L-L underscore S-T-E-F, Steph. Or you can send them to theplanthall at gmail.com. And it's H-A-L-L, -L, like our last name, 
not like an actual plant haul. I also wanted to say thanks to Holly and Crystal for sharing their stories. Holly gave me a beautiful Dusty Miller begonia when we met, and I'll, I'll be showing that to you all in uh, part four of the plant tour, which will be the new sunroom. So I'm excited about that and excited to show you that plant because it's really beautiful and sweet of her. And she also gave me this bracelet. Take it off here. Um, she told me about um, this actually, this company that sells these bracelets and it's partnering partnering organizations. They train and employ hundreds of women in rural communities of Nepal, and they help these women rise above the poverty level. It's a really cool bracelet. I hope you can see. Those are all beads on there, and I have a very small wrist. It's one size fits all. My wrists are really small, and this fits great. Um, the company is called sashbackslashco.com. If you want to check them out, I'll put the link below. I think it's really neat to support to support businesses that support others. And I love having this bracelet from my friend Holly. So I'll put the links below for uh, the company and for the bracelet company and for the book because you guys got to read that book. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you don't think I'm super weird or than you thought I was before. <laughs> I hope you guys have the best day of your life and remember to plant on.